origin of the whole idea of, of chocolate it comes from uh, when I was uh, in the midst of the Rwandan war and genocide, civil war and genocide. And I often uh, would have to go uh, to meet with different authorities to negotiate uh, truces and safe passages. Uh, uh, I come up to one day to one of these checkpoints. I see this young, young one, young boy coming, must be about 13, something 14. Um, comes towards my door so I open the door to get out and he's got his rifle and as the door opens his rifle he damn near sticks the barrel up my nostril and this is a, a young boy uh, nervous uh, tired uh, lots of yelling screaming the horrors of all the God knows the fatigue and everything else he's got his hand on the trigger and so there's no predicting of children because you can face a soldier and can anticipate, but a, a child who's still in development and under such horrific conditions and a lot of, a lot of duress, it is, you don't know if he, if he could pull the trigger even, you know, not, not realizing that he's, he's pulled it. And so uh, as he did that, I went into my uh, breast pocket of my uh, uh, uniform and took out a chocolate bar that I had. Uh, and he, uh, as he was concentrating on me and then saw I was, did, did that and took the chocolate bar out and saw it was a chocolate bar, that took his concentration off immediately and so that permitted me to uh, push away his rifle push him back a bit i gave him the chocolate bar and then we made it through though that child is carrying a weapon and doing some very nasty things because of adults pushing him to do that and holding him accountable that really, in the end, they're still children. So what I love actually is how General Diller has handled the situation by pulling out the chocolate bar out of his pocket and by giving it to that child. And he just he escalated the situation right there. And then it just opened the conversation. So that's really what I believe chocolate can do. It can open a connection. It can open, you know, the conversation, even with those that you disagree with, even with those that they can be pointing guns at your head. I'm very happy to hear that story from General Delaire and how he truly believed that anything at his, you know, at his responsibility was to make sure that these children would certainly be able to go back to their normal lives and they would not be weaponized in a war that they did not want to become a part of anyway. And I think as our family came to this country, we also believed in our mission of resilience, in our mission of reinvention, in our mission of rebirth, in our mission of renewal. And I think that's all it takes really just to have one person who believes in the value of peace that really can build on a movement. Once you come out of war, peace and safety becomes your first pillar, right? Many people, when you ask them, what's your number one priority? What's your number one thing? What's the, the most important thing in your life? Many people would say, you know, their um, water, food, you know, healthcare, uh, you know, the, the basic rights. But for us, it was peace. We believe that we are not in the business of chocolate, we are in the business of peace.